Good morning, Sunday morning walk down Flag Row in Brooklyn. Marcus Conti, pro se plaintiff in Conti vs. DSNY, investigative journalist, incidentally. So it's Sunday, it's like the 17th, I believe, of December, a couple of weeks before Christmas. I think that uh, as I, as we approach um, as we approach the, uh, the the response from DSNY in this case, I want to I, I feel proud that you know, I was kind of reflecting this morning about you know the 150 or so videos up the the efforts in in this case, and I'm I'm very I'm very proud to have been uh, someone who made this stance against a uh, city agency for this sort of corruption and this sort of employee abuse. And I believe that, uh, I believe that that effort was good and is good. And no matter how, how hard the agencies and the city and the government agencies and all the power, power brokers that be will try to twist and smear it into a story of a disgruntled employee who just couldn't get his way or something like that, you know. Uh, I think that I think that as as we uh, grow and mature as a uh, society, people will look at this and say, "This guy had, you know, steel testicles to do this." <laughs> and I and it, and I do it I do it, you know, so that it encourages. I feel like it should encourage other people to do it. So, you know, and what is all that? What is this? Is this about me? No, it's not about me. It's about, it's about, a, you know, a, a obvious corruption in a city agency. We saw, you know, we saw a guy who came along and he wanted a city job and he took his city job and then, uh, you know, he, 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 he did a job and, you know, he did, did it to the best of his ability. He wasn't a stupid guy. He wasn't, you know, wasn't particularly, I don't know, wasn't particularly gifted or, or stupid. He was just a regular guy, right? He did his job a little older, you know, a little out of sync, right? And he did his job. And what did he do? What was this? What was, you know, why was he fired? You know, what was the official narrative? See, the official narrative in this case doesn't add up, that it was just a guy who, you know, the city says, oh, we could fire people for for, for any reason. Right. The, the, the narrative doesn't add up. And, and uh, you know, that narrative, I want to talk more about that, that uh, this week because now that uh, we've proven, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt that, that it is a case of retaliation, it is a smear campaign against one guy to get him out because of a quota system, an illegal quota system, because of a culture of racism and discrimination and, you know, bullying people, right? Because all those things exist that, that uh, I'm a little rambly this morning, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a little out of focus. But what I want to, you know, what that's what I want to kind of get into this week is that that this has been a, a really, really noble effort. And I, again, we can't, we can't predict in life. You can't, you, you can't predict. I'm going to take my bench, my favorite bench. Because this is really what it's about. I sit on my bench on a Sunday morning and relax. And, and I feel good about the effort. I feel good about uh, having been, being an example for people to, you know, look back and say, man, this is the way to do it. You know, this is, there's something to this. There's something to the way this guy approached this problem. And how, you know, and, and uh, you know, in, in, the, in the face of smear after smear after smear after, after, you know, court after court after court, refusing to look at the evidence. You continue. You, you press on. You know. You press on, no matter what. You know? I put up those uh, videos of uh, 
RFK, you know, uh, Robert Kennedy. And, um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, he was, he, you know, he was a prophet <laughs> in many respects, so far ahead of, um, so far ahead of his time, and he he, he he defined something that was was very important. He defined the art of pitting people against each other, whether it's for race, whether it's for political ideology, whether it's for you know public opinion or any of those things. And it's when you teach people to do that, right, right. When you believe it in your heart that people are different, that I must compete and people are different, what you do is then teach it to other people inadvertently or directly through institutions, through word of mouth. And then what you're doing is you're not creating a, you're not creating a, an environment of camaraderie or brotherhood. You're creating a, a, an environment of competition where the person across from you or next to you is not your comrade or adversary but it is your ad it's your adversary but is actually more so your enemy and I think that's what Robert Kennedy was trying to define and you say well how does he know he's just some you know rich privileged white guy and that's true he was a rich privileged white guy but for some reason he was able to penetrate that idea that um, that uh, the idea of of I am your brother is really not is really not something that exists. So so I want to I want to go into that a little bit about you know uh, I expect a a severe. It always like I said it always gets it'll get noisy as we get closer or above the target, and I suspect a you know a smear campaign to come along. But the fact is the work done is is you know, in my humble opinion, you know, outstanding. There's hundreds of videos floating around YouTube. You cannot <laughs> try to Google, go ahead and Google Conti v. DSNY or DSNY scandal or corruption or fraud. And, and all, we've, we've totally dominated the search, right? So that was, that's, that's good stuff, you know, that's really good stuff because because it's true, you know, we're getting the truth out there, you know, we're getting the truth out there. That's all. Enjoy your Christmas, you know, enjoy your time. Again, it's, it is about, I remember what uh, Trump said when they asked him, he said, oh, is this, so, so even if you lose, is it, is it worth the effort? And he, he said, no, it's not. You have to win. If you don't win, it's the whole thing is a bust. The whole thing is a waste of time, Trump said. No, no, again, I'm, you can't accuse me of being a Trump fan. I didn't vote for Trump. I voted for Bernie Sanders, and then I voted for a green economy with Joe Stein. But Trump won, and he won fairly, and I, I respect that. And I, I have a, a lot of respect for his, his ability to hold his ground, if nothing else. I don't agree with his policies. I think that he's he he, he doesn't understand. That's uh, that's something else I wanted to talk about. I noticed, you know, I have a, a Wall Street background, kind of. I traded, and I was also a broker, a licensed stockbroker for a number of years. And I noticed that that the the mainstream media, you know, like MSNBC, for example, is uh, void of any discussion of the stock market anymore. You know, and it, 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 it never it never really occurred to me like when when did that stop happening? You know, for example, you know, they're owned by Comcast. MSNBC is a good example. Owned by Comcast, and it's not even Comcast is not a news is not a news company. They they, they say it right out that they're an entertainment organization. And they own a major news uh, uh, thing. what I wanna say is that you can attack MSNBC all you want and I think that a lot of independent media likes to do that because it's fun and it's obvious that, you know, people like Rachel Maddow and Chris Hayes are, have sold out years ago. They, they make their millions of dollars. They live in their Upper East Side apartments and they don't give a shit about anything anymore. They don't even know what, 
they don't even know what the fight is or the resistance is or what it feels like to be oppressed or any of those things. They've they've resigned into their, you know, limousine, their, their <laughs> limousine liberal kind of view of the world. And... But I think also what I, the point I was trying to make is that independent media fails to understand and talk about the, the, the power and the influence of Wall Street, that the answers are and always have been in the stock market, the rise of prices. Comstock price, Com, Comcast, Comstock, Comcast stock if you look it up, it's a NASDAQ corporation. It's, you know, $155 billion market capitalization. It's at an all-time high. It's from the crash in 08 all the way up to now. It's like triple its value. So these are this, this is where the answers uh, lie, you know. And all right, so there is, a, there is a significant connection that I think that I have an obligation to now because I do know that and then I, and I see – a lot of mainstream, a lot of independent media, the growing independent media. I won't name you guys, but you know who you are. The, the people that I love uh, don't touch on it, maybe because they don't know about it, or they don't, they don't, they don't realize how how powerful that influence really is. So, anyway, that was a lot for a Sunday morning. Have a nice day, folks.